welcome everyone to week 13. Wow, week 13, we've got one week left of introduction to C++. Next week is the final exam. It's gonna be around 15% of your mark. So study, we're gonna have a little bit of study class, uh, study time in class today. Um, I won't be recording and posting that, I don't think. Um, so it'll just really help out the people who came to class, um, you know, kind of as an incentive for coming to class, we we're able to do some studying together. So uh, we'll do that after this. I'm just gonna do a recap on classes and um, instructors and destructors. And then uh, we'll do a quick eight question quiz about classes and objects. And then uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about inheritance and some next steps moving forward in your C++ um, development career. So who remembers what we talked about last week with classes? Or if I ask this question, I know I asked this last week, it's how I opened it up. What is the difference between a class and an object. Object is this class member. Object is a member of a class. Yeah, that's one way of saying it. Totally. What was the key word that I used? Do you remember that uh, it was a, a class is like a blank of an object? A blueprint. Yes. There you go, Raymond. Nice. Blueprint, or sometimes I use the word template, either or, just to kind of help you visualize it. But yeah, you got it, uh, Myla. It's a member of a class. An object is a member of a class, or it's made from the template of the class. Cool. So um, getting into it here, we'll just start this PowerPoint and, uh, and kind of recap what we talked about a little bit. Um, as well as just finish up some of the concepts that I mentioned I would cover last week so that you're aware of them. So we talked about constructors and in C++ uh, with constructors, remember in our code, I'll open up my code light here. We made um, a program where there was three constructors in it and you can, you can make as many overloaded constructors as you want. Um, you can pass them you know, no arguments, you can pass them one argument, two arguments, three arguments, and depending on which constructor you call, that's going to be the constructor that is actually run. And we also talked about destructors, right? So when you leave the scope of something, the destructor is called, and it destroys whichever object was created. So let me run the code here, show you guys. Um, constructors, deconstructors. Destructors, sorry. Um, okay, so here we have our overloaded constructors, right? And so this is the player class, class player, with a private name, health, and XP, and then it had a public method for setting the name. Down here, we created um, some overloaded constructors, right? Because we're still in the class. There's the end bracket of the class there, and I'll turn on my, my fancy mouse highlighter for you guys. So here's our first constructor, obviously no arguments in there. Our second constructor has one argument of string name. And then our third constructor has three arguments. And then remember this little tilde sign is your destructor. So going back to the PowerPoint, if you don't define a constructor at all, C++ will create what's called the default constructor. And the default constructor is um, basically a constructor that does nothing. It just has to exist in order for us to actually be able to create an object. It's called when you instantiate a new object with no arguments. So here, right, we have a new player object or a new uh, pointer object, new player. And um, that's going to be pointing to some dynamic memory on the heap, right? But basically, it's instantiating that object, but there's no arguments. So there's going to be, you know, garbage data that's going to be kind of created. Okay, so... Let's take a look at um, declaring a class that has a default constructor in it. So here we've got a class called account, and it's got some private variables, um, name and balance, and it's got some public methods, so withdraw and deposit. But you'll notice there's no account constructor here, right? That, that's the end of the class declaration. So here, C++ would use the default constructor. 
Now, when we want to create an object of that account class, and you just, you know, call it account gym account here, and we make an object of the account template or blueprint, then it's just going to be using the default C++ constructor. And it's just going to be, you know, those values here, like string name and double balance, they're going to be, um, they're going to have garbage data in them, right? So best practice with C++ is we define our own no argument constructor, right? So sometimes the default constructor is called the no args constructor because you're creating an object with no arguments, right? Here we create a gym account and there's no arguments after it. So it's actually best practice to define our own no args constructor. Um, and this is because we don't want those values um, like name and balance to be filled with garbage data. So here we can see we've created our, our, our own no args constructor called account. See, it accepts no arguments, but name is going to be none and balance will be set to zero. And this way, we know there's no garbage data being sent or set up in there. All right. Again, in this case, we're going to be defining a constructor that expects a string and a double, um, and we're initializing our member attributes to the values that we passed into the constructor. So here you have your constructor account, and you accept a name and uh, a name and a balance, and then you set your name equal to the name val that was passed into it. Right. This is very common in programming. Right, you probably recognize this from Java. You guys, I think, have used the this keyword in Java. Is that correct? However, once we, yeah, okay, you do. All right, we'll talk about that a little bit in C++ and how the this keyword works. Um, however, once we define a constructor for our class here, C++ will now um, not generate the no args constructor automatically. It only creates that no args constructor if there's no constructor at all in the class. So because we have a constructor here with two arguments, there's not going to be that default constructor. So if we still need it, we have to explicitly define it ourselves. So if you have code that now calls um, the account class, the account object with no args, it's actually going to give you a compiler error. All right, now overloading constructors, remember, we did this last week here with this example in code light. There's three right there. Uh, just to kind of summarize, we can have as many constructors as we want. Each must have a unique signature. So here they're all called the same thing. They're all called player, but this one accepts no args. This one has one argument. This one has three arguments. So they all have a unique signature and the default constructor is no longer compiler generated once another constructor is declared. Remember our destructors as well. Here's that player class again, and we decided we want three. Um, this is just the example I was showing you in code light. Okay. Um, and here is us actually calling those methods. So remember, this is the method prototype that you create in the public um, assignment operator here, or, or the access operator, sorry. And here's the actual function definition of those constructors that are overloaded. All right. And we're initializing them to these values because we don't want the garbage data in there. Okay. So before we talk about the, this keyword and all of that stuff, we're going to jump into the quiz for today. So, uh, I'm just going to open it up in blackboard here and I will give you guys the password. You should be able to see it now. Um, We'll go over to tests. I'll end this little video as the recap from last week. And then I'll start a new video when we do the quiz together.